All right, well, good morning. Welcome to the last Sunday and last day of 2023. End of the year is typically a time for reflection, and boy, 2023, it's been one of those years. Some days feeling like, wow. And then some days, remember the cartoons where they would have like the little tornadoes, and one of the characters would go out and get drugged back into the tornado? Yeah, that was... 2023-2. Our little church family, it's been a year of happiness and sadness, and we've had gains and losses. We've had struggles and we've had breakthroughs. Some of the breakthroughs came really tough. Um, we've had some bad news, then we've had some blessings. Started thinking about all these things while I sat in front of the laptop Saturday morning and New Year's coming now less than 24 hours. Some of us are excited. 2023 was a wonderful year for some folks. More good than bad. Great times, opportunities, and they're expecting more of the same. But it's natural though that some of us are nervous and fearful. And look at 2024, I've got to pull a wrestling reference for my last uh, for my last message of the year. Anybody remember the Road Warriors? Big guys. Anybody remember the Mulkey Brothers? There's these two little short blonde guys, beach, bleach blonde. They just got bounced around like ping pong balls every single match. Some of us are looking, feeling like the Mulkey Brothers and seeing the Road Warriors across the ring for a moment. That's 2024. That you just don't want to. Gosh. What's going to happen next? Each month of this year has brought sickness and challenges and struggles. It's brought good things too. New opportunities, new seasons, new life. Some of us that are listening to this might be needing a new beginning for this year might be looking at our situation and wondering if it's possible to have a new start in this new season, in this new year. And we're not alone. And people that are wishing for that, and we're not alone. In fact, there's a God that's walking through this with us. There have been people like us through the centuries that have wondered the same thing. And this morning, we're going to look at God's promise to another group of people who are desperately needing a new beginning in their lives. And if you have your Bible, I'm going to get you to turn to Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Now, some background on this. Isaiah has one of the longest books and the most writings in the Old Testament. He lived six, seven hundred years before the birth of Jesus. He lived during a time, his ministry was during a time where Israel was conquered by the Babylonians and they were carried off into a strange land, strange people, and they were going to stay there 70 years. In the first part of Isaiah, God was saying this is coming. Chapter 43, though, is a hope, a chapter of hope. That I'm here with you through this. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. As he's writing this, the Israelites are in captivity in Babylon. During this same time, the writings of Daniel and Ezekiel, they kind of overlap. In periods, imagine like three circles and they kind of coincide with a little small time. Israelites have lost everything they caught, they would thought that they would keep forever. They've been raised up from the time of Moses, the time of Abraham. I have this land for you. You are my people. I will not forsake you. Did God forsake them, or did they forsake him? The king. That's it. That is where they find themselves at. They were homesick for that land. 
and for the blessing that God had promised them. They traded it all for the world. They forsook the word. And we've all been like that. We thought we knew better, and we've done, or maybe we're in a circumstance, because some of those folks in Babylon didn't do a thing wrong. They kept God's word. They kept it. But many times, bad things can happen to good people that didn't do a thing to deserve it. When the Babylonians came, there were people that still kept God's word. And they were rounded up with people that didn't. Maybe this morning, listening to this, there may be people that understand exactly why they're in the spot they're in. They may not be willing to look at it or accept it, but you can draw a line from where they're at to decisions they make. Then there are some people, you don't, no one deserves cancer. No one deserves Lou Gehrig's disease. No one deserves muscular dystrophy. No one does that. These are people who have been struck down with illness through no fault of their own. So we have people that decisions have them wanting a new start. And we have people that have been hit with illness, have been hit with misery by no fault of their own. In this crowd that God's talking to, the thing they have in common, they're all crying out to God. God will hear them. He would deliver them. The Israelites would be back home. And regardless of what the media says, they didn't get there in 1948. They got there 2,500 years ago. They were actually there 3,500 years ago. There will be a way made through the desert, a new desert. And some of us may be one that new way to a new season. First step in embracing the new thing that God wants to do for us in our life is changing our focus. Quit looking behind and start looking ahead. Verse 18, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. There's nothing wrong with reflection. Reflection on the past is a good thing. Taking up residence in the past is not a good thing. Reflection of the past can help us figure things out. We can look at things separated. We can learn more about ourselves. Residence in the past, you become trapped. The world keeps going. If you're continually looking behind, you can't see where you're going. If you live in that moment forever, you can't. Or you do it at the sacrifice of what you have now. And if you're ever going to move on to new things in Christ, we've got to learn that we can't depend on past victories to sustain us. I know in my own life, it's very easy and very tempting to depend on those things that went well in the past. Number one, anything went well in my life is because of the way I was raised or the God that has not forsaken me even though I gave him every reason to. Lord, it's a wonder my guardian angel there for about a 30 year period chain smoke, uh, take antacids and everything else because I put him through it. Our victories, are they really ours? And do we need to live in them constantly? Those things that went well, they don't last. We want to reflect on them, but we don't want to live in them. We cannot depend on our past victories to sustain us. Our relationship with God is an everyday active relationship. Our lives with our families, with our the people around us is supposed to be active. 
We're not supposed to live just in that moment because that moment comes and it goes. It's a beautiful moment. It really is. It's beautiful. We want to keep it in that special place. But our lives will fit into those moments. What makes them so beautiful is that they aren't every day. We forget the former things. We change our focus. Think about the children of Israel had many victories in their past, leaving Egypt. Strongest empire in the world at that time. Standing army. Most advanced technical army in the world at that time. Up and left them. Parted a sea. Walked across. Land of Canaan. Jericho had walls as thicker than the length of some cars. Blew a horn. It came down. Victors. Philistines, Amalekites, Midianites survived them all. Survived the split in their countries. But now, Jerusalem's a faraway memory. The Temple of Solomon is in their minds. It exists no more. The house that God told Solomon to build that had treasures all around, gone. That moment, those moments were gone. All their previous victories were doing nothing to set them free. And they needed a new work, a new miracle, a new victory. And the question isn't, what has God done? The question has to be, what is God doing in your life right now? What is he trying to do? Maybe you want to keep Christmas Day every day. Keep the tree up 365. Because you had a really good Christmas. Can you keep it Christmas Day every day? Life changes. God does. He wants to do new things in your life. And what is it that you want him to do in your life right now? You take away financial restraints, physical restraints, spiritual restraints. If you had to ask God for one thing right now in your life, what would it be? Secondly, in order to move on to new things in Jesus, there's the past victories. Can't live in our past failures, too. That devil will trap you there. Where you were not good enough, you were not strong enough, you were not brave enough. Guess what? None of us are strong enough. None of us is brave enough. None of us. There's some point in our lives we fail. We break. And they haunt us. Those memories haunt us. And we can become trapped in them. And we can just cocoon our lives around them. Guilt. Shame. There's not a steel out there that's as strong as those two things to keep you trapped. We have to let go of the glory days. Remember them. Keep them in our hearts. We also have to let go of our worst days. <coughs> our worst days too. The children of Israel had failed God miserably. Every time he blessed them with good things, they returned to him evil things. God gave them the temple. They gave him astral poles in high places. Where they sacrificed children. God gave them truth. And they lived and proclaimed a lie. God gave them commands. They lived like they were suggestions. God gave them wealth and they used to abuse the poor. God gave them himself and they gave him nothing but rejection. They didn't deserve to receive anything from God. How many right now are holding on to those darkest days? Those worst days thinking, I don't deserve any better. 
I don't deserve any better. I caused this. I made this happen. I should have. I could have. I should have. And he still loves us. If you go back and you look and you take away the self-guilt and the self-blame and really look at it, could you have stopped it? Could you have prevented it? Let go. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Keep them in the spot. Traumas we negotiate with. Traumas we live with. But we don't have to live through them every day. They can take a, a place, a spot, but you can move on. And I don't mean forgetting those you lost, and I don't mean forgetting that pain, because deep grief is a sign of deep love. You will always have some pain from those that you love that are gone because we are changed by them. I'm definitely not saying that, but you do not have to keep living through these worst days over and over again. God saying, see, I am doing a new thing. God's not condemning them for their past. They could do nothing to change it. But God's holding out a hand of hope. And he's saying, leave the past. I'm giving you an opportunity to start over. Change your focus. Isaiah 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. How many of us want forgiveness? How many of us need forgiveness? Forgiveness isn't an allowance. It's not an allowance to be abused. It's not an allowance to be manipulated. It is a way of letting you go. If you're going to get anywhere in your spiritual life, we need to understand we can't live on yesterday's faith. Children in Israel had experienced great spiritual blessings throughout their history. First Passover, crossing the Red Sea, conquering the Canaan, building of the temple. They'd seen the hand of God work in and through them. Yet their faith in what God had done was nothing, doing nothing to deliver them from their present situation. Our relationship with God is an active relationship. It has to be. That old faith is not sufficient enough to deliver them from their present problems. They need new faith and new vision for what God could do and change our focus. Maybe in a younger person, we were thinking we would be this and this and this and this. And maybe we're not. Doesn't mean God's done with us. Doesn't mean he's disappointed in us. They need, the Israelites need a new portion of the faith that brought them all those victories from before. And they need revival. How many of us sitting here, standing here, need faith renewal? Doesn't mean you're weak. It just means you're human. It's okay to ask God to give you a fresh touch of his love. Psalm 85, verse 6 to 8. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. He promises peace to his people and don't return to folly. Change your focus. Quit looking behind and start looking ahead. Another step is to clarify focus and discover what God wants for us. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See now I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You not perceive. Now I'm making way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. What do you see when you view your life? <coughs> do you 
see the desert or do you see the way? Do you see problems or possibilities? Then notice that God said, I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Children of Israel had a choice. They could view their past and problems of their present, or they could focus on what God wanted to do in their lives. A way versus the wasteland. In order to discover what God wants for you, we must see ourselves as God sees us. For those of us that are exactly where we're supposed to be at because of the decisions we made, have we humbled ourselves? I messed up. Have we humbled ourselves to those people we have hurt? That's part of of creating that way. That's a very hard, very difficult part of that way. Maybe we didn't do anything and we're sitting here with the illness. We're sitting here with something that we were born with. We're sitting here with something we didn't ask for. Have we still been honest with God? Father, I'm I'm broken. I cannot fix this. Please come to me. Please help me. Please work through these people around me. There are folks out there that believe that God would never have anything else to do with them. Too far gone. The rehab places, the hospices, mental health centers, prisons. God's taking people from there. He's done amazing things with them, even in the hospice, to die with dignity and peace because death is not the end. Those folks are wrong. God still loves them. He still wants to work in their lives. We may feel like our past has made our life, our life a wasteland, but in God, our life can become a stream of life for others. Romans 8, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Colossians 1, verses 21 22. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. In order to discover what God wants for you, you must see your possibilities as God sees them. He's making a way through your desert. He's able to transform the desert parts of your life into fields of blessing and abundance. Now, I'm not one of these fellows that's going to tell you you're going to have a 20-car garage and you're going to have, you just got to pray it and claim it. Nope, I'm not one of those folks. This world's full of troubles. There's always going to be troubles. There's always going to be storms. But things can get better. There can be a peace while you're going through these storms and you're not alone. God can bring people, the right people, into your lives to help you get through these storms and help you get one foot in front of another. But it's not free. He wants you. He wants a relationship with you. Not a spare tire relationship. He wants a relationship with you. If you've got old friends that are making you do old things and all the wrong things, you already know the price you need to pay. Are they your friends? If they don't want you getting on your feet, if they're only interested in you when you got money in your pocket or something that you can do for them, are they really your friends? He's 
making a way in the desert. God can take a dried up useless life and transform it into a life of purpose and grace. This little church family has seen it. They have experienced it. They have experienced the people who were walking dead. Trapped in lives of addiction. Trapped in lives of mental illness. Trapped in this self-hate for something they couldn't have prevented. And it's not Mark Bond. It's done it. It is God. It is a Spirit of God. It is a Holy Spirit that's come through and broken those chains. We have seen this. We have seen it. Now God offers it to all of us. That dried up useless life, that person that you're looking at, will be going to their funeral. He is capable and he has done it. We have seen it. It's not a foreign so-and-so has told me that there are people sitting here right now that have family members that through God have broken those chains. And they can go ahead and tell you it's a struggle. It is a struggle because whenever it happens, that way, that way in the desert, guess what? It's going to require you. That person is going through it. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to admit, I messed up. That may be part of your road. You may have to start all over again. But you're being given the opportunity that a lot of people in the hospice house don't have. That they wish they could have another opportunity. They wish they could go to work. They wish they could do those things. Those people who are trapped in their minds through dementia and Alzheimer's, what they would give to have another opportunity. And you're being blessed with it. If you've got a body, if you've got your mind. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces will reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Forget the former things, and do not dwell in the past. <coughs> Greatest step in embracing the new thing that what God wants to do in our life is to commit ourselves to His plan. It's a hard thing. How many of us want to uh, set the details of our lives? How many of us want to be in control of everything? I'm not looking up from this paper for one little <laughs> thing. <laughs> God has already set into motion the events and the people who would lead Israel out of captivity and back into the land of blessing. Ezra, Nehemiah. They're all already being set into motion. But it was still up to the people to decide if they wanted what God was offering. This wasn't the Jerusalem they left. This was a place where jackals roamed. Scavengers were at. Gone were those cedars from Lebanon. Gone was the Ark of the Covenant. But it was hope. It was a new life. They took it, Jerusalem's still there. If they refused God's plan, though, if they refused to follow where God was leading, then they would be doomed to remain in their captivity. And we have people right now that God's opening up. But you, they got to take it. They gotta make a step. They got to do it. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do we feel it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. God's already set things into motion. A new direction and a new purpose for our lives, but will we follow him? Psalm 95, verses 7 and 8. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the flock under his care. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Seek a new vision and a new interest in the 
in the things of God, quit looking behind and start looking ahead. It's okay to reflect in the past. Don't take up a residence in it. The glories and the failures, we can become trapped in them. They all deserve a place in our lives because they are part of what makes us. But we cannot live in them. We can draw lessons from them. But we cannot live in them. What's God doing in our lives right now? Or what do you feel like he's wanting to do? Have we felt those little urges? Have we felt those pulls? And are we answering them? We have to know that we cannot allow our past failures to possess us. What do you see when you view your life right now? Do you see possibilities or problems? God's already set things into motion. New direction and a new purpose for his life. Will you follow him? Y'all, let's stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we end 2023. Day. Fathers, as we reflect on the struggles and the triumphs, the successes and failures, Father, look into our hearts. You see who's living in the past, trapped by failure or wanting to live in the successes and not wanting to move forward. But Father, we all have to move forward. Help us to look ahead. Help us to see the ways that you are making for us in the desert. Help us to grab your hand and follow you, your plan. Give us all a new share of faith, Father. A new share of faith. Father, lift up everyone that's here and everyone that's watching and will watch. You know the needs. You know the struggles. You know the battles. Please work in our lives and help 2024 to be the year that you want it to be for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.